On est de retour au CES de Las Vegas pour vous parler tech, évidemment. Tous les jours, vous pouvez retrouver François pour Tech Co, la quotidienne. Et nous, nous sommes avec un invité exceptionnel, Panos Panet, directeur d'Amazon Device and Services. Tous les services que vous utilisez, tous vos produits Amazon. Hello, Panos. How are, How are you, you I'm great. I'm uh, great. How is your CES so far? It's pretty amazing. Like, it, it's, uh, CES has got a bit, I feel like it's got some pretty incredible energy. Do you see that? Like, yeah. There's a, a bit of a resurgence, a lot of tech, of course, but I think like everything is here. You see the change? I do. Really? You can see it. Yeah. I think over the last three years, like it's been subtly and slowly in, you know, getting a different vibe in the building. I think it comes with a bit of the tech that's happening. The AI surge is real. There's so many things that kind of come off of that, and uh, we feel it here. We are talking a lot about AI. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. I'm We're sure. going to talk about your CS, but before yeah. that, I will like to go back to your two years at Amazon. Okay. You arrive at the end of uh, 2023. After yeah. 20 years at Microsoft, you are in charge of devices, so Kindle, Fire TV, and a lot of products yeah. uh, and services. Alexa, well, we yeah. know a lot about Alexa. Um, what are you the most proud of in the organization? You know, watching this, like, you, you hear uh, our CEO, Andy, talk about, Andy Jassy, he talks about, you know, being the world's largest startup. And what does that mean? It means like working at speed, moving at speed, being able to adapt to what the environment needs and most importantly, what customers need. Mm -hmm. When you say, what am I most proud of? When you see Amazon, how much it cares for their customers and how much we think about the customer first, it's like when you're making product, that's everything. You, you, you just have to, what does a customer need? You think about it and you deliver to it. That's one. The other is the team that I get to work with, Melinda, I can't quite explain to you. It's amazing like the people are incredible they're so passionate we talk about products being a reflection of mm. the people that are creating them that are making them that the customers that are using them. we want to reflect like who we are and quite frankly like when you have that much passion as a team and that much talent for me the last two years has been a dream and plus the portfolio everything we get to work on but it comes down to the people what was your surprise when you have the large portfolio the day one culture Yeah, so when you think about it, there's this, the idea of being the world's largest startup, it also comes with that exactly you say, the day one culture, like what is it, let's move, what's next, how do we deliver for customers? You know, in, within devices, we do everything from satellites to self-driving mm. cars, uh, from wireless uh, to Alexa to Echo to Kindle, Ring, Blink. And when you see that portfolio, it, it's not surprising, it's just, it's invigorating, it's exciting. Mm. And that's, you know, the way we do it is we think about we're going to deliver great products for our customers worldwide. You think about it in France, like one of our best user bases. Our customers here, they love the product. You want to make great products for our customers, but you also want them to connect magically. So when you buy one device from Amazon or two devices from Amazon or three devices from Amazon, the more you buy, the more seamless it gets and the more uh, really the more easy your life becomes because of these products. Is it easy to have a, a single narrative? I know you like that when you're making products, yeah. right? a single narrative, yeah. with such a large different kind of teams. Yeah, I think so, because if you, it's a, the narrative, you say, you know, I like it. When we make products, we talk about, we think about one thing, and what's the one thing we're going to get right, and how clear can we make this for the customer, what they need. I think at the end of the day, Uh, it's okay to have either a single narrative or multiple narratives. It just comes down to the one thread, which is what does the customer need and how do we deliver that for the customer? If you have to summarize your two years at Amazon, your philosophy, the things you brought to, you bring to Amazon, yeah. how would be? Uh, first off, first, the word is amazing. It's been, it's been tremendous. It's been amazing. However, I would say we, we want products that fade to the back, We want, the details will matter. They need to be beautiful. They have to work seamlessly. But at the end of the day, we want to help people get things done. We want people to accomplish things that they want to accomplish when they pick up our products. And I think we're seeing that right now. There is a link between a lot of your product. It's Alexa. Yeah, for um, sure. W when you arrive, we knew that Alexa was powerful, but a little bit stagnant. Stagnant. Mm. I, I don't yeah. know if I can say that. You can say um, it. Well, that, that's how, what else should we think. <laughs> I think it's okay. Is it the accurate world? Y yeah, um, you're right. What was the emergency things you wanted to change to make it better, to make it new maybe? You know, uh, we have hundreds of millions of customers that use Alexa every day. 
when that's the case, Melinda, you have to be very thoughtful about what you're changing. So, you know, regardless of what word we choose to describe it, people still need it every day in their lives for what they use it for. As a product maker, as a team, we have to respect that. When you talk about thinking about your customer being customer obsessed, like what do they love, what do they already do? They've been using Alexa for 10 years. However, it was time. It was time for reinvigoration, for sure. And when AI came down the pipe, when you know LLM started to find their momentum, what we did was we essentially swapped out the entire architecture of the product mm -hmm. with ultimately um, what you would call in simple terms AI. And it starts to transform what it does. Uh, Alexa Plus coming to Europe. I can't tell you when specifically, <laughs> France. You but, want me but to it, ask? I'm going to tell you. I'm mean, going soon, soon. Like I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't. We actually have beta we can't users. Wait. We have beta users in France. Like they're like, but, but uh, when you use it, it's magical. So it transforms. But here's the thing: with the hundreds of millions of customers that we do have, we take care of them. It does everything you needed it to do. You don't. Don't worry. You won't lose that. However, it transforms to a magical experience. Any conversation you want. No dead ends. Um, being able to control the devices around, controlling your home, the the services that are attached to it. There is no other product in the world that can do what Alexa does right now, Alexa mm -hmm. Plus, and we're super proud of it. And when it gets to France, I can't wait. I can't wait. I'll be here. I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll be there. I'll see you, you there. You promise. We, yeah, I do. You'll be in France Absolutely. <laughs> as Absolutely. soon as it arrives. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> um, uh, Alex, you, at DS, uh, you launched, you announced Alexa on the website. Right, Alexa.com. What is the difference? What will be the difference? Will it be available worldwide? It or will just be. In the US? It will, well, when we come to France, it'll be available in France. Okay. So when Alexa Plus comes to France, and ultimately it's exactly what you would hope for in, uh, think about kind of a text box or a search box with an LLM or, you know, mm. AI. Uh, but it also does everything that Alexa does. Creates your list, manages your recipes, uh, connects to your smart home, connects to other people, creates documents for you. You can upload whatever you need. And then when you get back home, when you come off your PC, you go home, you have a conversation with Alexa, it will remember that conversation. When you go from the conversation in your kitchen, and you go to your PC, you can pull it up and you can get into harder work or get into more detail. It's a pretty cool experience. Daily Alexa all around. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's, when you think about a great assistant, you want your assistant with mm -hmm. you everywhere. And so think about Alexa as your assistant moving forward. Incredible. It can be your security guard with your ring cameras. It can be your home manager. And of course, don't you want that with you all the time? And so, yeah, it's Alexa everywhere. Why is it complicated to bring Alexa Plus in French or in Europe? Is it because of our regulation? Or is it no, oh, no, all safety no. concerns or something like no, that? No, no, no. First, like, we, we're always going to, there's a couple of things. And you kind of said it before, like, what's your philosophy? Like, we want to make great products, like, mm. down to the detail. Every detail matters. When you start going to Europe, different countries, different languages, like, out of respect for the culture, out of respect for the people, out of respect for what people are already using it for, you really do have to protect the hundreds of millions mm. of people using it. In protect meaning in the sense of, You don't want to take away what they need every day. So you have to, you, you, we work with speed, but you also have to be methodical to make sure when we bring something to France, we don't break it, that the language is perfect, that um, it fits exactly as you would expect it to. And while the product works great in French, it does right mm -hmm. now. If we were in the lab, I mm -hmm. can show you, be like, whoa, shipping, do it. Like, but no, no, there's so many details that have to be right. Just want to get it perfect before we bring it. Well, so it takes some time. It takes a little it time. It takes some time. Yeah. So, um, you've known to be a product guy. This is a compliment. Okay. That's <laughs> nice. Thank you. That's nice. No, it really um, <laughs> Does your mindset change? I'm a little embarrassed. <laughs> no, yeah. no, you, you, you know yeah. that. No, you're, you, you, you are very close to design teams, to philosophy of, t of product, of things sure. like that. That's important to make product. Yeah. Um, how does that mindset change? when you arrive at Amazon. Is it the same way to make products? No, I don't think so. I think it's not the same because every culture is slightly different, you know, like anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. uh, but the mindset doesn't change. I brought, I brought the same mindset with me. We talk about, you know, obsessing over every detail. Like we mentioned, we talked about products fading to the background. But we also talk about what does the customer need and how do we seamlessly put that in their hands. I think... Um, One of the things that gets a little bit lost is you, when you make a product, you do it from beginning to end, of course. So you're going from zero to 100, pick your analogy. Uh, but it includes every team. The way we talk about it is, while we have maybe it's a double E, an ME, 
you have designers, uh, software engineers, software devs, test, you pick uh, from marketing all the way through supply chain. We don't really, I don't really like separating the teams. We just more like we're all product makers. If each one of us, and it doesn't matter what you do, like what your role is, you have a role, we play the role together, but ultimately together we think about ourselves as product makers. And if everybody takes that mindset, it's very easy, because it's simple, it's not easy. It's simple to understand because you just focus on the customer and the, what the one thing of the product is and you can, you can make magic, you can make beauty. You know, when people buy devices specifically, these are objects. It's like the object on your wrist or the one that's in front of you or even the one you're holding. And these, these matter to us as humans. And so you really want to put as much love and care as you can because when somebody has your product, it's an object. It's maybe an object that you want them to love and care about um, as much as you've cared about building it. What did you bring to Amazon in terms of your philosophy? And what did, did they teach you something new? Because as you said, every culture is different. So the, the, what's incredible is, um, you know, Amazon works off of a set of leadership principles. And if you haven't seen leadership principles, it's great. Go to the website or go look up the Amazon leadership principles. They're, they're quite powerful. It brought me so much. And, you know, who I am as a person, what I believe in, you know, my values, when I read the leadership principles, uh, I'm so proud of that because they align so well. But also the leadership principles, they push me to anchor in what's most important. Um, and I think Amazon has, has taught me a tremendous amount. There's also this other concept of a two-way door and a one-way door at Amazon mm -hmm. that we talk about. Um, it's incredible concept of like when is the final decision that has to be made or the decision that you know you can't reverse versus decisions that let's take some chances. And Amazon does an incredible job of if you're going to move like a startup, you have to be able to make decisions quickly. And if you know where the two-way doors are, meaning decisions that are revocable, where you can actually, you know, as, you, as a leader, you learn more as you go. The more you learn, uh, you have to be responsible enough to realize maybe my decision has to be changed. And that's a two-way door. And when I'm at Amazon, like, the trust and, and understanding to be able to do that for leaders across the organization is maybe one of the most powerful tools that I've seen in industry. And uh, for me, it's been a blessing. What do you think about CES? Is it a kind of inspiration for you? Is it important to be there? Because uh, Amazon did a lot of announcements yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, well, first off, it's important for us to be here for a couple of reasons. One is, yeah, we announced new Alexa.com, new mm -hmm. Ring products, new Fire TV products. By the way, the Fire TV products are rad. They're <laughs> very cool. Uh, they're coming to France. I'm very excited about them. The, all of them. They're all great. But that's one. You know, but the other thing is you want to be connected to the industry um, It's, the industry's here. And you, get, you have this amazing chance to meet with the supply chain, to meet with partners, uh, so many partners on Alexa and Fire TV uh, and Ring and App Store. And you're just trying to connect. It's number two. Three is learning. There's so much here that's happening. Mm. Like the baseline of AI, is a, it's exploding with opportunity and, and devices. And so for me, like one of the best... You know, one of the best blessings being here is I get to see so many things and it turns on my brain. It just turns it on. You are still surprised. By I things. think so. Like, but, all, but it's usually small things, very small things. Like some of these big <laughs> things, like, okay, you, know, you see a lot of it. But, you know, you see great people, you see great talent. I get invigorated. Like I get excited. And then when I'm able to go to the booths and, and look and take a little bit of look at the detail, it, it turns on the product making brain and the creation engine. And you can, you know, do a lot of writing, a lot of writing. And so by the end of the week, of I'll ideas. probably get back. I'll drive my team crazy because, you know, <laughs> there'll be so many ways that we have to think about things differently. But it's pretty exciting. Like, you know, there's great talent and worldwide. It's just a collection of so many different cultures and people and different products. It's awesome. How do you see AI? Because here it's everywhere. Yeah. Do we really need... So it's weird. My question will be weird because we talk, just talk about Alexa. Yeah. But do we need AI for everything for you? What is the most important things to put AI on today? Yeah, I, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's different for every person. I do think AI uh, can make things better and does make things better for people, can make you more productive, can make you more creative, can help you complete tasks. Specifically, I think about Alexa a lot. Um, and we believe, like, uh, you having a great personal assistant that can do so much and complete so much for you um, and even help you be wiser, you know. And I think it's a, it's a powerful tool right now that it, As people lean into it, the more information you give to it, the more you get out of it. 
I, we're seeing our customers do that today, and then you kind of you get both joy out of it and productivity. I think it's pretty exciting. It's pretty exciting. There is another topic where I'd like to ask you okay. a question. Is Amazon Leo? We are very interested in France. That's cool. Amazon I'm glad. Leo. We're going to need you to be. First of yeah. all, this is a much easy name to pronounce than the project Kuiper. Kuiper. <laughs> yes. Right? That was so hard. Leo. Actually, when we're debating the name, that was a big thing. Like, I don't know how many... like. Kuiper's, yeah, but Leo's Kuiper cool. Is cool but I'm Leo. glad you like it. You like it. What, well, yes. You like the name. What is your yeah, purpose with Leo? Uh, it, the, the way we talk Leo. about it as a team is, uh, so first, Amazon Leo is basically a network, mm -hmm. broadband network being created, satellites that we're launching. Um, it, we, our goal is to, uh, we talk about it as a team, is to reduce the digital divide. There are over 2 billion people in the world that just don't have great connectivity. We want to bring connectivity to at an affordable price point to the globe, to everyone. Like it, it's like such a, I'm so passionate about it. Like being able to do that. I think if you want to have a massive impact, make a difference in the world. Like this is one of those ways. Like how do we actually bring and re bring that connectivity and reduce the digital divide amongst people? You left your mark at Microsoft on Surface and Windows. What will be your mark? I just hope, what is your favorite I know, product? Look, I, the <laughs> truth is, I just want to be. I, I'm I'm part of a great team, and I believe in that. Like in with you know, like being part of a great team is everything to me. Um, and if I can influence it, and if I can be a part of that team and a leader for that team, I think that's what I get my that's what I get my energy from, and it's where I find the, you know the most benefit. And 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 then it creates creativity for me. I think it's you know Amazon is truly one of the best companies on the planet and they care so much about people and customers um, that for me I just I feel blessed to be part of it. Thank you very much Panos for your time and have a great CES. Merci à tous d'avoir suivi cette interview. Le CES se poursuit sur Tech Co, la chaîne sur BFM Business et évidemment sur le site internet. À très vite.